morning. Uh, my name is Sandra Favela. I'm the Interim Director for the Department of Human Resources. On behalf of Mayor Anthony Copeland, the City of East Chicago, and the Indiana Plan, we welcome you all here today to our event, Building Careers for Our Community. We are very excited. This is actually our first kickoff to try to get everybody familiar with the building and construction trades here in East Chicago. And um, what a better way to do it is to have everybody here and have the people who are interested to come to the expo to get information. I have Brian Ship with me today, an area coordinator for Indiana Plan, and he's going to give you the information about what is Indiana Plan. And to my right here is Brian Ship. Hello, how you guys doing? All right, uh, just to give you a brief background, graduated here in Duran, I went to Purdue, uh, got an associate's degree in, uh, I don't have my brain, uh, associate's degree in accounting. But uh, what happened is when I got out of college, there was, you know, they tell us that you go to school, get a good education, come out and get a job. When I came out, I was overqualified for entry level positions. Uh, I was then introduced to the building trades. I myself am an iron worker. And uh, when I got into the trades, I figured out that this was something that needed to get more exposure. Because um, coming up, I knew nothing about the building trades. And I felt a very good compassion to get the word out to individuals to get involved with the trades. Um, I was blessed to get uh, a new position as a coordinator for Indiana Plan, and it's my way of getting the word out about the trades. <clears throat> uh, just to give you a brief uh, uh, synopsis of what the Indiana Plan is all about, and it's exactly that. I'm a support craft for the building trades. Um, so that means I help individuals figure out what particular trade that suits them and help you get there. Um, some of the minimum requirements needed to uh, apply to any other trade, you got to be 18 years of age or older, um, good physical condition, um, you must have the aptitude of a ninth grader at least, minimum, and then each particular trade has uh, different requirements needed to uh, advance in that particular trade. Uh, with me today, I brought a couple of trades along with me. <clears throat> I have uh, Mr. Jason Cornett, Finishing Trades Institute, District Council 91. He is uh, 32 years in the trade, uh, five years as a part-time uh, instructor, two years as a uh, full-time instructor. Could you stand up, sir? <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, I have Mr. Ron Simcoe. He is a, a carpenter and millwright joint apprenticeship coordinator, 35 years in the trade, uh, 12 years as coordinator. Mr. Simcoe. Uh, next up, we have Mr. Troy Butler uh, of One Operating Engineers Local 150, 26 years in the trade, five years as instructor. And next up, we also have James. I'm not going to assassinate your last name. <laughs> uh, 13 years as in, in 150 operators, uh, five years as an instructor. Uh, next up, I have Mr. Lee Culver of Plumbers Local 210. 30 years in a trade, six years as coordinator. Next up, we have Mr. Sal. Espino, um, a East Chicago native, graduated 91 from East Chicago Central, 21 years in the trade, 11 years teaching, two and a half years recruiter, six years as vice president. Uh, 
next up, I have Mr. Pat McGrill, Sprinkle Fitters, Local 281. 32 years in the trade, six years as instructor slash coordinator. Uh, next up, I have Calvin Gordon, uh, Pipe Fitters Local 597. 21 years in the trade, nine years part-time as the instructor, two years full-time as instructor. And Mr. Calvin Houston, also 597, had the pleasure of working out with at BP. Uh, this is his, he's seven years in and first year as an instructor. Uh, Mr. Irwin Rowland of IBEW 697 Electricians, 20 years in the trade, seven years as uh, instructor. We also have Mr. Larry Gutierrez, uh, 14 years in the trade, 11 years as instructor. And uh, last but definitely not least, uh, I brought uh, Mr. Brandon Edmonds, who's representing Indiana Plan and Local 395, just in case y'all didn't know. But uh, uh, he's, he, uh, he's a three-year journeyman. Um, he graduated from Indiana Plan, and he was also a part of a program that all the trades are, are uh, one of the things we like to promote is our hard hat to helmets. So, Mr. Brandon Edmond. Oh, man. The one that we rely on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was just joking. <laughs> All right, we have Mr. Joe Bolk, local uh, 41, 18 years in the trade, two and a half years as instructor, eight years working in the field, eight years as coordinator. Uh, Mr. Keith Vitkovich, local, 26, 19 years, well, that, that would be the rumors, 19 years in the trade, 10 years in the field, 13 years as coordinator. Uh, Mr. Vitkovich came straight out of high school and right into the trades. And Mr. Joe Pozo, uh, <laughs> he told me to say that. Uh, Business agent for Local 26, nine years as business agent, 20 years in the field. And with this, uh, we're going to adjourn to the audit. Uh, oh, sorry. Sandra has some more words to say. <laughs> Don't leave, Brian. Um, the other thing is, uh, I also want to acknowledge we had several universities and colleges come out. I want to thank you all for coming and different organizations uh, coming out. Thank you for coming as well. We're going to go ahead and open just for a couple, five minutes for question and answers. If anybody has any questions, you can come to the mic and ask Brian a question about the Indiana plan. Uh, <laughs> Roslyn? Roslyn? She'll come to you. Okay, I, the, the question I have is that uh, a lot of the young men and women that come um, out of high school and maybe just had a few years in college and maybe went to Ivy Tech that didn't go into the building trades say they have a hard time getting into the trades, especially the trade unions. So how can they navigate that so they are able to uh, come out of school maybe and get a job and not have to go through the change? We know there's a lot of jobs. East Chicago is, is doing a lot of things. And we try to help East Chicago people. But they're not able to get into the unions. And of course, union people take care of union people. So we want to know how can they navigate their way through to start getting into these trades and to be able to get the jobs. Okay, uh, Indiana Plan actually, uh, our book, we have our booklet that lists all of the trades 
and there are minimum requirements to get into that particular trade, the times when to apply for those particular trades. Um, and if by chance you don't get in that way, you can also apply with Indiana Plan, and Indiana Plan will work with those individuals, help them to uh, make themselves more employable so that they can get a better look when they apply to the particular trades. Did I help you out a little bit? Uh, We're always looking, like I said, to help these Chicago people. But one thing we found that maybe they're not in the union or they're not craft ready. And so that stops a lot of people from being able to get a job. So like I said, if their steps are to be able to go through the Indiana plan and yeah. be able to get their stuff well, ready, that's a good uh, Another thing that the Indiana plan is doing with the coordinators, uh, we are trying to get into the school systems so that we can talk to those um, counselors and instructors uh, because the minimum requirements, like a little bit of geometry, algebra, we found out when they test for us that it's weak or because individuals say, you know, maybe I don't need to take that. But later on in life, you will need it to, to get into the particular trades. So we, that's how we, we will help them. Anybody? Just one? That's good. Um, I came from uh, Atterbury Job Corps. That's like a training facility, so I'm a uh, first year apprentice. But um, how do I supposed to go about getting to like the carpentry trade if I've already been there a whole year training for it? You were with who? Atterbury Job Corps. That's a um, job corp in um, Edinburgh, Indiana. Mm -hmm. Well, luckily for you, I brought along Mr. Ron Simcoe, who is the coordinator for the Carpenters, so you can have to shoot all your questions to Mr. Ron Simcoe. Okay, thank you. See how I pass the buck? <laughs> pass the buck on that one. <laughs> No, I appreciate it. All right. Good morning. I'm the coordinator for the Carpenters and Mill Rights Trading Center. We're located in Hobart. Uh, for somebody that's been in the uh, Job Corps program, that is one of the, there, we have eight or nine, nine different processes that you can enter into the Carpenters program. That is one process that we have out of the nine that's an automatic entry into the program if you've been with Job Corps. The, the best way to, to handle that is your coordinator from the Job Corps in Atterbury needs to contact me, and then there's paperwork that has to be addressed directly with him. Okay, that answer your question? Okay, uh, I'll be, I have a booth out there in the other room so I can talk to you and answer any other questions that you might have. Thanks. It's the one with no pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? Right over there. Uh, hello, my name is Javier, and uh, I work for the East Chicago Housing Authority. I'm the Director of Operations. Uh, I see in our city here uh, that about one-third of the population, one-third of the population we have here can probably fit the need of going into the apprenticeship program. Uh, one third are the young children, the other third are the seniors, and then you have that one third there that uh, can probably get into this. First of all, you mentioned there's qualifications. Well, that's where we lose it all the time because they don't have the geometry, they don't have the algebra, they don't have the minimum requirements. So they're out of the picture right off the bat. Do you have any type of mentoring, uh, any type of tutoring to get to that step? Because that's where we fail. Uh, the, the, the initial jump for qualifying is where we struggle. The outreach, you know, you, you, you invited schools here, you invited some of us in here, but how do you outreach to the students? You mentioned about going to the high schools uh, and going into that. Uh, how do you get them, but you also mentioned that their mathematical skills weren't all up to par. How do you get them to be up to par so they can get into this? Because what's happening is we seem to turn our heads and well, if you don't qualify, you don't get in. See, those are the people that need the help. How do you get those people, and, and, and they want to work, but they always say nobody cares. 
So we got, uh, and I happen to have a background in the building industry and the construction industry. I'm also a graduate from Purdue with a bachelor's degree in engineering. So I do know about all the, the crafts here that we're talking about. I myself struggle, I'm an East Chicago resident, to get all this, but uh, you do need that key. And, but without any type of tutoring, mentoring, uh, uh, one on one type of help to get us in here because the city is very adamant about getting employees uh, to work in the city. We do have a lot of construction going on, a lot more to come, but these people here are like lost. And that's why a lot of times they resort to other things because it says nobody cares about us. So, does the building trades and industry here, can they offer some kind of uh, uh, a program in which you can get them to get to the qualification level? so that they can go into the building? I know I said a lot of stuff. <laughs> well, uh, one thing that Indiana Plan has done, uh, we, we got with the Urban League of Northwest Indiana, and with Work One, they have an online mathematical uh, refresher or tutoring where you can actually get fresh refreshing or get more uh, mathematical skills online you know at your leisure uh, because because of their um, uh, uh, it is a money thing because in order to get uh, we'd have to mass do it for a lot of people to come in to sit down and try to take a math refresher but offering it online you can that's one way um, uh, Purdue has a uh, uh, mathematical uh, refresher that we refer people to. Uh, we also, um, the trades themselves, actually work with Ivy Tech, who offers um, mathematical uh, refreshers as well. I guess my question is, how do we get them there? I mean, it's there, the programs, a lot of them aren't, aren't even computer literate. They, and so those are the people, but they can work. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people in the building trades I know can't even write. Some of them don't know. I mean, they were grandfathered in the whole thing. My question is, the one-on-one, -on -one, to make them go there, to say, well, this is an option. Well, you know, if you give people an option, they don't want to take the time and day to go to a school and take an online refresher course. Well, How do you grab a group, do a caravan, publicize it, take them, make them do it, open their eyes, to okay. give them this information. Actually, uh, working with the human rights of East Chicago, Gary, Hammond, we need individuals coming in. Now, now you can't just sell Sandra or myself, I want to do it, and then show no aspiration on trying to do it. Now, if they come into the office, I will personally direct them to where they need to go in order. If you, if you can't or don't have online access, I will direct you directly to um, okay. Ivy Tech, where they will help you okay. get to the get to where you need to be. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have time for one more question. If anyone else has any question, okay. Well, like. Uh, Brian was saying, we do have the expo. It's down the hall on the right-hand side. We also have refreshments on the left-hand side. Uh
Denver, local 597. I've been in trade for seven years. It's my first year as a full-time instructor. I don't have no family in the trade. But I did the first step of applying. And when you apply for a job like this, then you get the opportunity to be blessed like I was. Last year I made $137,000. And so far since I've been working in trade, I never missed a day of work and also haven't missed a day of pay. I'm constantly keep on working and, and anybody can do this. If I can, you can. Hi, my name is Calvin Gordon. I'm a member of Local Union 597 out of Chicago. Our training center is located in Mokina, Illinois. Uh, we have a beautiful, beautiful facility. Uh, feel free to come down. Uh, on the first Wednesday of every month, to fill out an application. Uh, you can go to our website, just Google up Fight for this Local Union 597, uh, and that website will give you all the information you need uh, for the, that you need to know for the application process, excuse me. Uh, this trade, I've been in this trade for just under 22 years. Uh, it's been very good to me. Uh, with the welding search that I have, it helped. It put me in a position to uh, never miss any time that I didn't want to miss. Uh, wonderful opportunities, a lot of things you can learn with this trade. Uh, it's the, in my eyes, I, I think Local 597 is, uh, is one of the greatest, or is the best trade out here. How you doing? This is Steve Segura. We are here at the uh, Building uh, this is the Building Trades Expo that the City of East Chicago is hosting. And joining me here is Lee Culver from the Plumbers Local uh, 210 uh, here at the show. Uh, tell us how you think the show went and uh, tell us all about you. Man. I think this is a great opportunity. Uh, glad to see that we've got good participation today. Also glad to see that we've got a lot of the other trades here. Uh, we have promising careers for a lot of people. You're going to have to work hard. Uh, there's nothing easy about the trades, but it's very rewarding coming out the other end, too. Uh, most of us are four or five-year apprenticeships. We are a five-year apprenticeship, but again, it's not easy. It's hard work, uh, but it, you get a sense of accomplishment in the trades that I don't think you get anywhere else. I started out in auto mechanics, and my best day was to put something back the way it was supposed to be. In the trades, you create things that were never there before, and that is an awesome feeling to walk away on the last day, turn around and look at what you did, and it's only there because of you. That's a great feeling. Uh, we also all uh, earn a living wage. Uh, we're not rich, we're not overpaid by any stretch of the imagination, but we make a good wage. Again, we earn it. What are, what are some of the average wages that uh, some of you earn? A first year apprentice plumber starts out at $17.04 per hour. Your health insurance kicks in after six months. Uh, that health insurance is valued at right at $8 an hour. So combined, your low 20s, uh, after the first semester, your wage goes from $17.04 to $18.60, then goes to $22. Coming out the other end, uh, after you've completed your fifth year, you're at $38 an hour and about $16 in benefits. I need to get a job like that. That's, <laughs> that is a decent salary. That's, you it can is. live comfortably it off is. of something like that. And, uh, so what, what are kind of some of the first steps you have to go through to do this? We all look for math. You don't have to be uh, calculus level, but you do have to be proficient in basic math skills. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide with a pencil. Uh, You're measuring a lot of pipe. With know? everything. Uh, I've got our math books laying out here. There's a lot of geometry, a lot of algebra, but we're a school. We're going to teach you how to do this. We don't expect you to come in knowing it. But the basic math skills, yeah, you've got to bring those to the table. And does it cost anybody anything to try just to get their foot in the door to do this? So applications are free. We hand them out quarterly. Uh, you go on our website.
website, which is uh, plu210.org, and download the application, fill it out. You have to have a valid driver's license, a uh, copy of your birth certificate, or state-issued ID, and uh, high school transcripts or diploma. Bring that to me on the days that we accept apps once a quarter, and that gets you started. There's no application fee, so it's free to apply. After you apply, uh, we set you up for some testing through work one. After you've achieved the minimum scores we're looking for in that, we set you up for an interview. And good. Uh, one of my friends, Sal, is, uh, he was always my plumber, yep. you know, and uh, I've seen him kind of start out and move his way up, and he's, uh, he's doing well for himself now. And, uh, he's moved and that up. could be you. Yeah. He's moved up pretty high in our organization. He's a South Creek guy. I heard he said he's the boss now. What well, he didn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> Yet. But well, that's good. Thank you for joining us today, and uh, I thank you. look forward to more things from the phone. Very good. Thank you. Hello, joining me here is Larry Gutierrez from Ivy Tech uh, here at the Building Trades Expo for East Chicago. Tell us a little bit about your program. What we offer, Steve, uh, it's a 62 credit hour program for construction technology and one for building construction management. The technology program uh, is more based hands-on uh, in the field of carpentry um, and some of the careers that you have throughout the building here today. Now, is this, uh, is this the Ivy Tech here in East Chicago? Or? Yes, yes, it's located at 410 East Columbus Drive at the De La Garza campus. Um, we have a big, large lab area in the back where we build houses. We literally build houses in the building. That's what you guys do in the back there. Yeah. I, I always see them as I drive by. Yeah. So uh, that, that's one of the things. So if someone's interested in getting into the program, what's some of the first steps they have to take? I'd say, I'd say the, 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 some of the easiest stuff that's becoming easier and easier now with technology. We, we're going to have by fall a one-stop shop, which is the student can come into the tech I'll walk in, they can see an advisor, they can get registered for courses, as well as take their Compass assessment test to help them get their placement for the uh, general education that goes along with their degrees. Um, it's, it's instead of seeing you know advisors and bouncing around here and there, we've got a one area that we have designated we, we're, uh, with a recent construction, and um, it's going to make life a lot easier for a lot of students coming off the streets that may not have any knowledge. So just come on in and say hi, introduce yourself, and let us know what your interest is. So you basically, in basic terms, you will show someone how to build a home. Yes. Right? Yes. And everything that goes along with it. Codes, materials, uh, with, it, with opportunities that lead into the, the trades. Uh, job placement as well, internships. Is there a number we can contact you? Yeah, that's, uh, you can contact 392-3600. Uh, my extension is 217. Um, if you want to contact 392-3600 as well, you can just you get the front desk and if they had any questions, they can pass you on to a counselor and advisor. Thank you, Larry. No problem, Steve. Now, if you're interested in building a home, you need, now you know who you go and see. Hi, my name is Jason Cornett with the Finishing Trades Institution of District Council 91, uh, the International uh, Union of Painters and Allied Trades. Uh, we do apprenticeship programs within the painters, glazers, uh, hydro blasters. Uh, we cover uh, residential to uh, industrial to bridge work. Uh, we just got an array of uh, different things we train in, find spaces, has Whopper, he uh, has has comp classes. Uh, we just we just have a variety of uh, different classes that we teach. We have great instructors. Uh, focus is on the apprentices that's in our classes to make sure they come out, they do well, they come out with a associate's degree in applied science through Ivy Tech. And uh, it's, a, it's a really great program. I wish we had this when I served my apprenticeship. Uh, fortunately now we do have it and I love promoting it and doing my job promoting it. Uh, my name is Keith Vitkovich. I'm with the Roofers and Waterproofers Local 26 Apprenticeship Program. We are located uh, in Maryville, Indiana directly off of Route 30 and Broadway. Uh, we have a four-year apprenticeship program that consists of four years of training, 152 hours of training per year, and also 6,300 hours of apprenticeship training. Individuals can apply to our apprenticeship program every Wednesday between the hours of 8 a.m. till noon. 
must have a valid driver's license with a good driving record and must be at least 18 years of age. We can be reached at 219-756-3718 for any questions and locations for applying to our apprenticeship program. You guys do a lot of work in East Chicago? Yes, we do. Hey, uh, I'd like to introduce Joe Posey, who is our business representative for Roofers Local 26. Hello. Uh, yeah, do a lot of work in East Chicago? The things in East Chicago are picking up. We'd like to thank the mayor for working with our local and uh, making sure the roofs on uh, City Hall and the maintenance and building department, engineering department went to a union contractor. We appreciate that and uh, putting our members to work in the city of East Chicago. Thank you. My name is Sandra Favela, the Interim Director for Department of Human Resources. Uh, on behalf of Mayor Anthony Copeland, we would like to thank everyone who came out today for building careers for our community. It was a great success. We had all the building and construction trades come out. And um, but along with Indiana Plan, we thank you for coming out to get your word out to get uh, all the East Chicago residents. And uh, just put more information out there, you can uh, reach me at uh, 884. Uh, 4503. Uh, my office is at 3101 Broadway. Um, you can also go to indianaplan.org to find out more information.